I want to know what a scene kit is. Yeah, I even I even googled it and I couldn't find anything. Yeah, I, I googled it first too, and I, I just came. It's up a with tie a piece guys. Of <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I didn't. I thought it was a. I thought you're like the cinema person. I thought it was a, a thing that I didn't understand. It was just the pariah orgy scene. I'm not sure what oh, the kit uh, thing came from. I, I, I love the seriousness and profundity with which you treat my words. <laughs> the following podcast is the second in a series of VOKs about HBO's Westworld. It was recorded at the midway point of season one and it contains full spoilers for the first five episodes of that series. In addition, it will contain minor spoilers for the 1973 film Westworld, as well as its sequel, Future World, and the short-lived 1980 television series, Beyond Westworld. Because this is a VOK podcast, it may also contain spoilers for all published works in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. Okay, well, welcome to Vassals of King's Grave, where we will discuss the continuing episodes of Westworld and all the crazy theories out there, so we look forward to discussing that and all the characters and the status of all the characters too, whether they're an android or human, so hopefully you'll enjoy the ride as well as we discuss that. My name is Glenn, I'm Dagus Rebush from, from the podcast Vice and Fire Forums, and I am joined by Hannah. All right, sorry, it's Hannah getting ready for work in real life. <laughs> I mean, um, it's shadowy. <laughs> on the also, Bina. Hi, everyone. It's Bina007 from Chicago today. Go Cubs. I guess the Cubs went, so that's been out of date. <laughs> we are glad to have him back. It's Michael. Hi, I'm Michael or Mordian on the forums. And... Also joining us is Thomas. Hi, uh, Thomas F.T. Ward on the boards. And finally, Jock. Hello. Hey, Jock. Hey. We shall know him by his crackle. <laughs> <laughs> well, great to, to have you um, on the, the discussion too, Jock. And uh, this is all spurned together by Bina, who's... Um, so you've, you've been reading a lot of on Reddit, is that right, Bina? Yeah, I've been sucked into the uh, the rabbit hole on this one. Yeah, so basically, I, I the first fandom I got into before Song of Ice and Fire was actually Battlestar Galactica, so I obviously have a predilection for this kind of Cylon fiction, and I've gone down the Reddit rabbit hole on this one, so I just desperately wanted to discuss this with people and didn't want to wait till the end of the season, so that's why I put up, like, not the call to arms, I kind of hijacked your thread, Glenn. That's where it came from. And what's the the big theory that you're most obsessed about? Oh, so many. Um, that the black hat and white hat are the same man. That I guess that's the really big one. Um, who's a Cylon? Because that's the BSG thing. And you know whether Bernard's a Cylon, who Arnold is, who Dolores is in relationship to Arnold. Whether we're going to see Rome World or whatever it was called <laughs> in the movie. Um, which would make me happy. But yeah, basically, Black Hat, White Hat for me is, is the totally key one. But also whether Logan's family are on the board of the company, whether this is Future World, whether it's a testing ground for a tech, whether it's just the Matrix. I can go on, but someone else should speak. So what we're referring to Ed Harris as Black Hat, is that his official... 
Yeah, that's I think the, red the man thing. in black. I thought was the yeah. official, uh, but yeah. I think well, I think people will pick up either way. Yeah, see, in my head, I I thought like in the pre for the show that he was going to be the Joe Brenner character. I guess I don't know if I I read that or I just thought that. So I, in my head, I think I was the gunslinger, but I, I guess Man in Black is probably a better name for him. Yeah, I, I feel like early on I was seeing him referred to as gunslinger, and then the Man in Black sort of. Uh, Seems to be the preferred nomenclature currently. Well, it's the classic moment from Terminator 2 when everyone thought that Arnold would be the villain again because he was in the original movie, but then, like, they have that surprise moment in the premiere episode when he try, um, Teddy tries to shoot him, but he can't because, of course, the man in black is human. Yeah. And I th- that's we all agree at this point. I know there was some speculation that he wasn't human at some point, but I think we all agree now that he is has to be a human being. Yeah, I don't see any I don't see any evidence at all for him not being at this point. And in fact, I'd be quite angry if they kind of made some Deus Ex Machina sort of like cheat where he wasn't human. I think that wouldn't be playing in the rules of the game. And so much yeah. of these TV shows, and maybe some of the frustration with people who watch Lost is. You know, you, you've got to somehow resolve some of this mythos, and the mythos has to stick to its own rules, otherwise it's cheating the audience. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that I'm uh, I'm worried about going forward. I feel like I've been uh, burned often enough with, with television shows, especially, that I'm, I'm certainly I'm worried about that, if, especially if, this, if it gets, you know, five seasons. That's right, Michael. Was it you that said that... Um like if there's so many surprises, like X character is uh, yeah, actually yeah. a cyborg, I'm quitting the show. <laughs> yeah, it's at some point like if um if, if it becomes a situation where it's just like every other person turns out to be a uh, a a bot or a host or a Cylon or whatever, uh, th- I think it's going to lose any impact that it has. Um, so I mean, it's definitely. I mean, from the very first episode of the show, I was I was into the show. I like it a lot. But I'm also I'm worried about the future of it, <laughs> just because similar shows seem to uh, fuck me over eventually. Is anyone aware of the history of how the show came to be? Did did HBO go to J.J. Abrams, or did he, or did they go to the Jonathan Nolan, or how, how did the show originate? Does anyone actually know? I think it's Jonathan Nolan who's the real creative force, and I think that he has some kind of first look deal for his projects with HBO. Okay. So I think, I'm not sure they were specifically soliciting it from him, but his production company would have given it to HBO first. But then I think there is a sort of a timeline thing here with them knowing that Song of Ice and, sorry, Game of Thrones is running out for them and needing, <laughs> and needing a mega show to take over. And they haven't, they've had a few failures, haven't they? Like a, a few of the shows they thought would take over haven't. So. Yeah. I think this there's a lot of pressure on this to really take off, and it feels like it has um, so to date. Yeah, to me, it feels very engineered to take off and to be a replacement for Game of Thrones, right? At least that's the way it feels to me. It, it feels like it's in a, the show's DNA to... I think they learned maybe from uh, True Detective Season 1 that the shows can kind of generate their own buzz through through Reddit and stuff like that. And to me, this show feels very much constructed to be its own hype machine, if that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, they, they, yeah they, they've so. gone for something with a mythos. They've gone for something that will get the geeks going. Yeah. I think they've realized the power of the geeks yeah. with Game of Thrones. So. Yeah, well, they purposely waited to like start releasing the trailers after Game of Thrones was airing here. Yeah, was it originally? When was it originally supposed to air? I know it was like much delayed in the second half of the season, or at least that's what I, my understanding that, this, that it was supposed to come out earlier, but uh, they had lots of production issues with the second half of the season, so that... Uh... Yeah, does anyone know? Yeah, I thought it was going to come out... I thought it was going to come out like four weeks before it did, because I remember they started running... The very first trailer that I saw uh, came on HBO right after... Like the second episode of season six of Game of Thrones aired is when they started like targeting that audience. So, and I thought I thought they kept saying like August, but and then I saw a trailer like two weeks before it came out. I saw a trailer. It said 
premieres tonight at nine and it was a Sunday night, but I was watching it on YouTube. And then I went to my HBO and it was like, oh no, it premieres and it was two Sundays from then. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I feel like it was supposed to be like when I first heard about the show and seen like upcoming announcements about it, it would, it was going to be September, but it didn't actually start until October. I feel it was it was initially made to meant to come out even much much earlier than that because I think they had reshoots and rewrites and some yeah. issues, and then so I think it, it's one of those shows that's had a bit of a troubled gestation. But the the reason the spin the PR spin is always that you know John Jonathan Nolan is a massive perfectionist and he wanted to get it right and the stakes were so high that they they just really took the time. Um, so I'm not sure what the truth is. I'm sure it'll come out in time, but. It feels like it, it's working so far. Plus the, the sh- well, the creators of the show, they've got everything mapped out for at least five seasons of the show, so hopefully it still does well and, you know, they've got a lot of uh, material to cover for the next five years. Yeah, I, and I really like that because I thought with BSG, they were making up as they went along towards the end, so it makes me happy. Sorry, Thomas. Yeah, no, I, 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 on that. Yeah, I, I, I have mixed feelings about that, but uh, hopefully it works out. <laughs> yes. So what what's your mixed feelings? Like what do you well, think negative I, I feel like that's not the optimal way to maybe make a television show, but uh maybe it is the best way to make this show, so I don't I, I feel like you kind of learn things along the way and, and maybe there's enough room to in this five year plan or whatever it is to to modify things if if, if they learn things, but uh I feel like most shows in their first year aren't the shows that they end up being, I guess. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair point. I I mean, uh, you know, again, uh, always worried about, you know, the rules and things sticking together. Um, I'm just... Yeah, anything that they could, do, (laughs) even if if it wound up being not quite as good a show, if it kept them from... Uh, from having things in the first season that didn't mesh with things in later seasons, like, I would take it. I mean, I, I really, I'm not sure I believe them, you know? <laughs> I think that they're, they're more likely to have, uh, some kind of a Bible and then decide they don't like it and change stuff. Um, so I, I'm not sure that I believe that they'll stick to their five year plan like a, you know, legal document or anything. But, um, but I'm glad that they have it at least. I'm glad that, I don't know that they're at least paying lip service to the idea of uh, staying on, of not uh, uh, not deviating from previously said uh, things or whatever. There's a better way to phrase that. But. I have heard rumors though that um, when Bernard whispers into um, was it Dolores' father in the, the first episode that. That was just like something for the pilot, but it's something they won't actually address in the future. I don't really? Just something that will be forgotten about. It's not like this big mystery. It's just something they had for the, the premiere episode, but then like decided to scrap the idea later. I suppose in a way that kind of makes sense narratively. Like you plant a few rando seeds in the pilot and it just gives you some openings later on if you discover you need to create something to talk about, maybe. But you don't need to sort of um, germinate all those immediately. I'm, I'm being a bit of an apologist, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah. I just feel it's like, you know, we're on episode five, assuming everyone watched this week's episode, so it's probably a bit early to sort of start condemning it for not exploring things or saying they're not going to explore things because they might have plans now, but those will mutate as audiences respond to yeah. different types of storyline. So. I mean, it's the architect. I'm sorry. But it's the architect versus the gardener thing with George R. R. Martin, right? There's probably a happy balance, but I, I don't think everything should be meticulously planned out unless it's a completed project, I guess is the way I look at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. I just, um, it's just very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> so I, didn't wa- I didn't watch Lost, so I, I guess... To, for them not to fuck... Yeah, I, I mean, I was... Honestly, I was never that big of... I mean... Uh, not to deviate hugely, but I, for me, Lost, like, after a 
couple maybe into the third season, I already felt like they were jerking me around and I stopped watching. So like I was not betrayed by the finale or anything, but I'm I have similar sorts of concerns. Like I feel like I'm worried. I hope it doesn't happen, but I'm worried that you know by the second or third season of Westworld, uh, assuming that it gets there. Um, that I will start to feel like they're jerking me around, but I hope that doesn't happen. I have the same misgivings about it. I just feel like anything J.J. Abrams is involved in, he's not a closer. He has, like, really good ways to get you reeled in, but then doesn't deliver anything that's worth all your time and energy, so... But then this brings, cause did he, who wrote Lost? Was that him too? Or was he just the... Yeah, he was a lot more involved with Lost and then Alias was the other big like wah 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 show, you know? Yeah, so, so the reason why I have less or fewer fears is that I feel, in fact I felt this a long time, that it's Jonathan Nolan who is really the dominating, dictating creative force behind a lot of Christopher Nolan's movies. And that I feel that he will be pre, you know, he will be the prime mover on this show. And therefore I feel it will close because if you look at movies like Inception or any of these worlds that the Nolan brothers create, they are almost over hermetically sealed in how carefully they're scripted and how everything ties in and ties in. They're like obsessive about the details that, you know, if you watch Interstellar, the science must work. Um, so I feel that that's a good balancing force to J.J. Abrams and actually I wouldn't my personal view is I would imagine J.J. Abrams at some point will leave because I think Jonathan Nolan will prove to be too domineering and that J.J. Abrams will just be reduced to basically being the cinematographer so I don't know how it's going to work out but I think it's going to be quite fascinating this is a show that I feel has the potential for a real showrunner (laughs) punch-up has anyone seen um, I think Jonathan um, Nolan was um, involved in writing the show Persian of Interest. Yeah, I've seen that. I but it's not. much less ambitious. It's much less ambitious than that. It, ah, I think right. okay. it, this, to me, feels more like Interstellar or Inception or one of the great Nolan Brothers films. Has anyone here seen the movie Westworld or the sequel Future World? I've watched Westworld. Yeah, I watched Westworld. The um, the the satellite channel that puts out. The TV show in the UK also had the movie on, on demand, so I rewatched it. And you Brenner- had it on the movie channels too. <laughs> yeah, it freaks it freaks me out still. Your Brenner is scary. <laughs> yeah, I recently rewatched Westworld as well. I haven't seen Future World in a long time, and there was a TV show which I never, I was alive for. Beyond but, Westworld. Yeah, I never saw it or don't recall ever seeing it. So what happens in Future Westworld then? Future World, or? Yeah, Future World, sorry. I think Future World is kind of like, it's about the technology. They're kind of trying to make clones of people in the real world to do strange things. I, again, I haven't seen Future World in forever, but uh, I think it, it takes it kind of outside the park a little bit in, into the, into like the Delos, or someone at Delos is trying to like take over the world through androids. Both of those movies had, like, the first ever computer-generated imagery in them. Like, they were both the pioneers of some really crazy digital CGI. Yeah, Michael Crichton is was way ahead of his time. I, I, I think we were debating this on the boards, whether his stuff is any good or not, but as far as ideas go, he's, he was brilliant. This entire discussion is something that I had planned to talk about another podcast, but just completely, completely forgot about it. <laughs> you know, because I was going to talk about Beyond Westworld, because I found it fascinating that they already tried to do a show about this, but it failed. And, you know, they're trying to, like, they put a lot of money into this new incarnation of it. Yeah, it's all, it's all like, I don't know if Jurassic Park success has anything to do with it, but, uh, this is, you can kind of see the kind of groundwork that Crichton was doing for Jurassic Park here with his, his first shot at Westworld. Kind of technology as theme park. Well, we can, I guess, talk about some of the, um, some of the theories that Ina has written down for us and <laughs> what we think or, uh, well, what we feel about them. Uh, the one that I wanted to talk about is the small boy that um, Ford interacts with and what we think about him or what he means. 
I was just going to... Does everyone think he's young Ford? I mean, it seems to me... Yeah, I mean, that that seems easy. Uh, My initial thought when he very first appeared was that he was Ford's brother. And I don't know why I decided that, but that was just my very first thought. It was just like he was kind of going back to somebody maybe he talked to when he was a kid, but I think maybe talking to himself makes more sense. But that was my first uh, thought. And then what I've that seen does... theories that it's maybe like people think that Ford has this backstory which made him get so involved and so focused on work, like some tragedy with his family. So like a grandson or a son that's dead, and that's why Ford modeled like the boy after like his son that died, for example. Yeah, but everybody can't have a son that died. <laughs> that's well, a good point. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Bernard has a son that died, but uh, yeah, I, I, I guess what that says about about Ford, if if there are other hosts that are modeled after people from his real life or something, is interesting as well. Yeah. Well, the the big one just now, like meaty one that everyone's talking about, is um, if William is the Man in Black in thirty years, but well, but well, thirty years ago, in fact. <laughs> Yeah, anybody anybody here not think that's true? Yeah. To me it's almost R plus L equals J at this point. But uh, I think after after last episode, after episode five, um but episode four I was I was into it, I thought probably, but I was not like, you know, dancing around and going, Yeah, definitely. Um but after episode five I'm pretty much you know, like ninety nine percent on that. It just the fact that Dolores sees another version of herself mean that like the two times are happening at the same time there's weird timey stuff going on with Dolores right because like when she's getting she gets shot at one point and then she looks down and she hasn't been shot and stuff like that so it, it's hard to tell what's going on with Dolores but uh, I think I, I don't know I don't know how to answer your question, I guess. Yeah, I, I think with saying what is saying what is happening with Dolores at any given moment, I think is is pretty difficult. I mean, she's obviously bouncing around a lot in her brain or whatever passes her brain. Um, but so uh, yeah, at any at any given point, I have no idea what timeline Dolores is in or if she's hallucinating or anything else. Yeah, that. To me, is like my personal favorite theory. It comes from the sequel movie Future World, where they start taking DNA from park guests to make hosts. And so, if they're using like real people's DNA, you would think that, like, if they're 3D printing real people's DNA, I would think that you'd end up having a certain amount of like, uncontrollable memory because that's part of the human condition is we have like conscious and subconscious memories to a really crucial extent which separates us from like other species so they'd have like things like muscle memories and stuff it's the same thing that's going on with Maeve and then her dad oh so, so you think that um every well, every host is designed after someone that's visited the park in the past. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how it works. It's just a theory that I heard. They were talking about who Arnold is and the fact that they're kind of pointing to he's still in the park. He found a way to turn himself into a host. And then they extrapolated on that because I've never seen the Future World movie, but I was watching a summary of it, and I guess that's kind of, like, the storyline in that movie is that they started collecting DNA from hosts, and then there was something that I I read online. There's, like, a website you can go to for the corporation, um, Delos, and, like, in real life right now. And on it, there's a consent form that, like, They ask you to sign away. They can collect your fingerprints, your DNA. Any fluid samples that you leave in the park property becomes their property. I think Future World is on Amazon Prime in the United States at the moment. If if someone, I haven't gone and watched it yet, but uh, 
It's also on YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think if we're going to get five seasons or whatever, it's very realistic that, that there's going to be... It's going to go in a direction like that at some point. The creators of the show have said that, um, you know, they have talked about fan theories and how they're quote-unquote close to, <laughs> like, what they, they have envisaged for all the characters. Well, that's kind of depressing. By episode five, we've, we've cracked all the mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and they've, they've already mapped out the, the storylines for the next five years anyway. Jesus, I mean, that's going to become a pretty automated watch then. They they have to have some rabbits out of their hat to keep us interested, surely. I think the problem is, I guess this is a gen- general problem for all creators of fantasy worlds, that now that the internet fandoms have become so sophisticated in how they analyze and crack all these theories that it's kind of hard to sustain mystery anymore without cheating and doing the lost thing where you just never resolve stuff and just you know i I do kind of pity the kind of the mystery writer because yeah because you know in the old days dumb dumb people like me would read game of thrones at at least (laughs) before we figured stuff out and now you just go on reddit and it's all cracked for you I kind of like feel we've like killed our own enjoyment a little bit. Well, you don't have to go on Reddit though if you don't. Yeah, that, that's. Yeah, and I don't have to check my phone every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> to eat this massive like Starbucks sort of two thousand calorie frappuccino. <laughs> thing I have no self discipline, and I think that people who are attracted to these worlds to the point where you get obsessive about it and podcast about it don't have the self-discipline, right? <laughs> so. Not to mention, one of our, our interests is podcasts, so other podcasts that discuss the shows that we love, so it's guaranteed to be discussed on those, those podcasts, so it's really hard to avoid sometimes. Yeah, for sure. But I'm just taking ownership of my own complicity in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, go sorry, ahead, Ed. I mean, I, I don't disagree. Um, I just sort of, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't feel like I'm going to, I, I can't think of a show that I've stopped watching because, uh, I, well, I was like, oh, I figured this all out. Fuck it. I'm not watching it anymore. I feel like the, the other side happens a lot more, which is, oh, I don't think that they really know what they're doing and they're making stuff up and, and their mysteries aren't really mysteries. They're, they're nonsense. Right, like that has made me stop watching things, but I, I can't think of an example of the other side of it where it was like, oh, I think I understand what's going on. I'm not interested anymore. Yeah, as I said, I think the show they knew what they were getting into. I think they designed this show purposely to be for Reddit, to be for podcasts, to begin with. So to say I don't feel sorry for them, I guess is what I'm saying. I, I think they know what they got into, and I think they at least thought that they could do this so it'll be interesting to see if they can pull it all off and and make the trick work in the end yeah i think that's a fair point especially with like game of thrones um i only bought hbo so i could watch game of thrones so if they're thinking in a couple of years they'll lose a big chunk of their fandom same reason they've got to give us something to hold on to oh yeah true so, Jock, do you have any theories or ideas about where the show is going? I think Anthony Hopkins just kind of showed up on set one day and they didn't make, tell him to leave. <laughs> All he's done is eat dinner and walk around the park. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that you're unimpressed does. with his acting, whereas, I, I don't know, I just feel he brings the sin... <laughs> This quietly sinister presence that few other actors probably can, but are you are you not as happy with his performance then? No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that he does have like a smaller part than what I thought he would have. Like there's a few episodes where he's not even um, featured in the, the episode and things like that. But then it makes sense since it's not an un- so it's an ensemble cast, so it makes sense that he would have like a smaller role. But just initially, I thought he would be. Featured more. 
do we think? Well, I mean, to be fair, he's really old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most people his age are retired. So, how much can he do? Do we imagine he's going to be like a Sean Bean kind of thing, where he's he's only absolutely, in, yeah, yeah. I did that in the other podcast as well. Yeah, that was sort of my first thought as well. Is that I I don't know how many seasons we're going to get to keep. Him. <laughs> yeah. I think the. Who's the lady that Bernard is sleeping with? Teresa. Teresa. To me, uh, she is so blah. I, I feel like she's a throwaway character. Yeah, I, when he's sleeping with? The director of QA or whatever? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do remember now. I don't think we've seen enough from her yet, but I, I think there's... There's re- I, there's reasons for me to be interested in her at least, but uh, yeah, I mean I don't dislike her or anything. I I am not particularly intrigued by her at the moment, but uh, she doesn't she doesn't bother me or anything. I mean I, I think like the I don't know if we'll get into it, but like the satellite uplink guy with the thing in his arm, the woodcutter. I think that she's gonna probably tie in with that storyline or that mm, plot yeah. thread. So far, the most interesting thing about her has been that scene between her and Anthony Hopkins where they're having lunch in that place, and he makes everything stop. Yeah, that was a great scene. I thought her very good scene. That was a good scene, scene yeah. yeah. Anthony Hopkins generally, with the, um, the, the gesture controlling everything with very subtle gestures, I think is always, uh, it's always pretty great. Anytime he starts or stops uh, hosts from doing something with, you know, like a touch or like a small finger movement or something like that. I think that that scene, too, like how you said subtle, I think that it is a real nod to how subtle and like what a slow burn, at least the first season will probably be. If not like the first couple, you know, I imagine it'll probably be like, have you ever seen Homeland? And the first two seasons are like a continuation of each other, and then it starts breaking out into more compartmentalized seasons. I imagine yeah. something similar to that would happen with this show. But I have to say, I did stop watching Homeland in the third season because I felt that seasons one and two had such a good organic arc that it felt I think very it's really ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's something. It's a bit to me like sort of the Matrix, then Matrix two and three, whereby. Sometimes I feel there's a work of art that just has this natural arc, and then they sort of they extend it as as a shameless cash in. And I felt very much in admiration of Penny Dreadful for knowing when to end. And I'm sure there were some financial concerns there as well because it was never so popular. But I think there's something to be, there's something to be said, isn't there, for just having the guts to say we've told a natural story and we're not going to try and shill it out. So absolutely, I mean, like that's a. Uh thing I always tend to respect uh, British shows uh, more for is that they're okay with being more of a miniseries than a like they don't need to run for 15 years to feel successful or whatever they also don't uh, need to have 20 episodes per season but I think it's, yeah. probably to do with, it's probably to do with the franchise, not the franchise model the syndication model which I think yeah. in America is very powerful right but I wonder whether things like Amazon Prime and Netflix now break that yeah I mean level. I think fewer and fewer I mean there aren't that many shows that are doing the 20 or 22 episode seasons anymore, right? I mean, I mean, I guess maybe the network stuff still is, but I don't, I don't think I watch very much network stuff. Well, how how unionized are actors and crew members in Great Britain? Like, if you have a show on the BBC, yeah, no, how- it's, it's a unionized industry. I mean, unions in general aren't very powerful here, but it, it is unionized. Because here it's been where, like, you have to, you know, have them work so many days and stuff. Yeah, in, ge- in general, since the early 1980s and Margaret Thatcher's <laughs> prime ministership, we don't really have very powerful unions in this country. The only last bastions are sort of transport in London. Um, but, yeah, she pretty much killed them. So that might have something to do with that. I think a lot of it is that most British shows have like one writer rather than a room of writers, so there's just a limit to how much those guys can churn out the season. Mm-hmm. But anyway, back to conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bina, so you, I think, mentioned, I haven't heard, I've, 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 I haven't done that much uh, Reddit crawling, uh, just mostly reading all the people who don't believe that 
uh, William is the man in black and getting angry and then leaving. Um, so, but you mentioned a couple of other ones. Uh, specifically, uh, you said you thought the um, Westworld is on, on a different planet. Well, I think there's been a lot of discussion around if this amazing tech exists, then wouldn't it just sort of radically revolutionize ordinary society, right? I mean, to the extent that you could have these Cylons that are so amazing, why wouldn't they have taken over all the work on Earth? And why wouldn't everyone have a domestic robot that they can rape at their will? Um, I mean, that's the kind of way in which the t- British TV show Humans takes that concept and therefore, how much money would you have to have to actually go to Westworld? And is Westworld, therefore, some kind of testing ground for the Cylons? And they don't really exist in ordinary world. And so people have posited the idea of, like, where is this? Um, is it on an island somewhere on Earth? Is it um, in a post-apocalyptic sort of world where we're now on a different planet? Because there's got to be, like, how is it that this technology... I think someone put this on the, the board, actually, on the forums, on the thread... Was it you, Mordian? Like, how have they kept this technology so separate from them in real life? No, I, I actually live in Texas, you know. <laughs> it was uh, East Texas Direwolf, I think, is the one who posted it. Oh, okay. So it was our Louisiana correspondent. Um, but yeah. But I think it's interesting, right? Because all we see is this world. We don't see... And like some people on Reddit have said, well, you know, we imagine that these people are getting onto this transportation device and going to Westworld, and we see the train running into Sweetwater. But... For all you know, they're just plugging in an AI in their in their lounges at home. Yeah, I feel like the AI thing is. I feel like that would um, I don't know break some sort of viewer contract or something. If like all this stuff, like oh these super realistic robots, and it's like oh yeah, they're not really robots at all. Yeah, we've seen satellites or, or references to satellites, so I don't think that makes sense. That it's just this VR AI thing that you're plugging into. I think it is absolutely a physical place. So what's your working assumption, that they've just taken over a big bunch of desert somewhere or it's on an island somewhere? Yeah, I mean, I, I posted that map that is from the website, and it's got, like, latitude and longitude or one or the other. I don't know. I'm not ink as rain when it comes to maps, but I, I don't really <laughs> know maps very well. But you know the difference between the horizontal and the vertical lines, right? <laughs> I know no, horizontal and vertical. I don't agree with horizontal and vertical <laughs> either. It's latitude and longitude, but I, I, I imagine I don't see any reason that it's not on Earth. I guess is I, I, we haven't seen enough of the outside world to say that there aren't already androids doing everything. I, I, but if it if it is on a well, okay, actually, this is almost like a separate. It doesn't really matter where it is. But from it's the Swedish Swedish actress or the Danish actress who plays the sort of the corporate the board member. Like what? What do you suppose is keeping? If this technology exists in the real world, why would you need to pay to go into Westworld to do all this stuff? I mean, okay, Maybe. it has the medieval cosplay or the kind of West the Wild West cosplay, but if you could get that quality of doll in the real world, you don't. I don't know. Is it because in the real world it's it's illegal to rape us? I don't know. I, it, it becomes well, confusing. To- I mean, I, I think there's a lot of... I mean, we don't know, obviously, and I I would not be surprised if they simply just don't address that, at least for a long time. Um, but, I mean, I think there could be a lot of things. I mean, the hosts seem to need uh, a lot of care and maintenance, generally, right? I mean, like, I, I don't... I mean, obviously, they're getting shot, which, you know, presumably, you know, if you had, like, a domestic servant bot or whatever, they they wouldn't get shot quite so often. Um, But I I feel like there's a lot of stuff. I mean, like... That's how well they clean the dishes. (laughs) That's a really good point. It's like uh, you buy a car, right, and you drive it. Oh, well, everyone has a car, but people still pay to go drive race cars on racetracks. Because you would never do that with your real car, you know? Yeah, that's true, actually, yeah. That's like when you're playing Grand Theft like Auto, you drive a car differently than you would if you're driving to work. You know, you don't. Yeah, exactly. never seen me drive. Never seen me drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, because there's no consequences, right? Yeah. When it's fiction, you know, or you're. It's like when you're a kid. You know, you go to your friend's house, you play with their toys. You're maybe not as careful as you are with your own damn toys at home, because you can't get those replaced. Yeah. So, it, it, I don't know, it could be on Mars, but it 
could be in Madagascar, yeah. or it could be. But what or is it amazing? That they like technology. own the patent and have never released the technology, and no one's ever been able to crack it as well as them either. That's true. And yeah, like, that. why wouldn't you sell it to military first? Why wouldn't it be that these I are agree. drone soldiers? Like, I just can't believe that there's more money to be made. I agree with that. From I mean, this tiny point zero one percent of the population who has the money to pay for this adult Disney World. Yeah, but putting well, it on the amount Mars. of money that generates has to be less than just selling this shit to the U.S. Navy. <laughs> well, I mean, like, so in terms of in terms of military contracts, at the very least, I mean. I think the only thing you'd be really interested in selling is the AI aspect of it, right? Like, the military doesn't give a shit about realistic human bodies, right? The military is going to put it in a in a oh. rolling steel box, right? I mean, not sure, just, sure. I mean, maybe maybe like walking and stuff yeah, like that. that they go upstairs that's, and through doors sure. and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, that's fine. But um, but I'm saying like in terms of like all of the realistic human responses, right? And the you know uh, whatever, like showing you know, empathy and fear and stuff like that, right? Like, I don't... I think a lot of the stuff that they spend a lot of their time... a lot of their time striving for is not stuff that the military would necessarily be interested in. And, but, sure, as far as, like, just the, you know, uh, intelligent AI, um, I think, yeah, absolutely, there's, there's, you know, other uses for that. But I don't think that we can say that just because... Um, I don't think we can say that they haven't sold AI or that somebody hasn't sold AI to the, you know, to the military and stuff like that. But I don't think that those, I mean, you know, I, I don't think that just because you do that means that you don't also want to run a theme park for 40 grand a day. Yeah. It just seems like a very, very niche. Yeah, the economics don't seem to make sense to me either. But I, I don't know that putting it on Mars means that it makes more sense. Someone put on the forum thread, right? Like, how much How much does it cost to go to Westworld? Like, the man in black, how rich does he have to be to have just been there? Well. <laughs> well, didn't one of them yeah. say 40 yeah, Logan, grand a yeah. day? Logan says Logan. 40, 40. 40. So, but, okay, so I've heard a lot of theories that it's on another planet, but it's set in some sort of dystopian future. So, there might be a case where, like, in this future world, it's like a 12 monkeys situation where there's been some cataclysmic event and people can't go above ground. So there's the fantasy of actually being out in like open air that might be attractive. Or if you had like a totalitarian government that does have the same technology, but they like want the general population to think that the patent is only functional at this part to like keep a charade going that they're not insinuating their own AI people among our daily lives and spying on us. I've heard a, read a lot of different theories about that. Yeah, I mean, that's another... I mean, androids could be illegal in the outside world, I guess. Yeah. Or it could be like an iRobot type thing where there are laws surrounding how you can use them and when. Hmm... And I just, this is sort of a way to break free from that. But it's also a question of, like, well, if you're engaged in, you know, a healthy sexual relationship, why do you still watch porn or why would you go to a strip club? It's a fantasy. We always seek to indulge ourselves in fantasies, even when things are just fine. You know, we're very escapist. I think I think what intrigues me, and maybe this just reflects my generally greedy capitalist bastard interests, is what what are the economics of Westworld, yeah. and what is it that this company truly does, and how does the ownership of this fantastic um, AI and other technology impact what it's doing in the real world? And I just I really hope we get into that because at the moment we really have focused on Westworld itself, and I I, I want to see this broaden out. In I mean, one way they could fill up another four series if we've already come close to cracking all the the codes in Westworld is to talk about to take it in a more sort of Channel 4 BBC Humans series type way of what is this tech doing in the real world and what is the business about. So I, I really want to see that. Well, I think we will. I think if the uh, the William and Logan plot is 30 years in the past, I think we will see how Delos takes over uh, the corporate control the part from from the original um, kind of just theme park aspect of it. What's so it, I don't it? believe that that's true. That's the one theory I'm not convinced about. 
What you don't think we're going to learn all this stuff, or uh, no, 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 no? I don't. I don't think that William and the Man in Black are the same. Oh, good. I was hoping oh. somebody would think that. Why? why yeah, there. Well, I've seen <laughs> like there are pros for it. Like when William first gets there, the logo is different when yeah. he comes up the stairs with that one host. And then later in a flashback with um, Anthony, with Ford, a scientist like hands him a clipboard and on that scientist's jacket is the same logo. And we know for a fact that is in the past. But then it was mostly the last episode that... Really? Or not the last episode, the fourth episode that did it for me because that guy in... It's like Ford's office or whatever, that one... He's very animatronic, that old, like, prospector guy. And he's talking to him. And all of his movements are, like, really, really robotic. But in both Ford and William, or sorry, the man in black and William scenes, all the hosts that they're interacting with are that same fluid movement of what people are saying is, like, the present time. So, uh, two things, well, there's a, there's a few different things yeah. you can say. Uh, one is, uh, Ford and Arnold spent three years in the park by themselves before it opened. Uh, Wild Bill is like the first, the first prototype, yeah. essentially. It got a lot better. Uh, second thing was, uh, during Man in Black's speech, or one of his speeches in the last episode, he was talking about how when the park switched from the, uh, from the mechanical to the organic, uh, hosts, and he was saying they said they were more realistic, but really they were just cheaper, which to me means that he didn't think they were more realistic, right? I mean, like, I, I don't see why you would make that distinction, why you would say, like, well, they said it was because they were more realistic, but they weren't. More, I mean, they were just cheaper. I, I I think if he had had a, if he had, if there had been that kind of upgrade, I don't think he would have been dismissive of that reasoning. Um, and then also in episode, I can't remember if it's three or four, when there's the Anthony Hopkins is talking to um, Ford is talking to uh, Jeffrey Wright. What's his name? Bernard. Bernard. Thank you. Uh, talking to Bernard, and he's doing the and there's uh, flashbacks happening in between. Uh, there's a shot where Ford is talking to a host who's half robotic legs and half uh, skin skin on top of robotic stuff torso, and like I mean he's looking at him right in the face and the guy's making like, facial expressions and looking sort of melancholy and stuff. I think there's definitely some evidence that uh, the mechanical, uh, that they had good-looking, good-moving mechanical uh, hosts. Yeah, I think I think there is a time gap uh, between when Arnold and, and Ford made the jump, like, in technology from when we first see where they're dancing and they're super mechanical to uh, when... Dolores is asked when her last interaction with with Arnold was, and she said it was like 34 years ago. And then we get the from the Man in Black that he's been coming for 30 years. So I, I think in that in that gap from when they started the park and they were super mechanical to when Arnold uh, left the scene to when uh, they finally trans heard everything from mechanical to organic I, I think there there was a point where there were fully functional like in the Westworld movie the original mechanical hosts in between the organic and mechanical kind of animatronic ones if that makes any sense and I think yeah, we'll see, point. I think we'll see it because the man in black says, I cut one of you open once, and you were all mechanical onions. And I, I think we're going to see that from William's point of view here in the next five episodes, and I'd, I'd be very surprised if we don't. Um, hmm. As yeah, we were talking yeah. just now, it raised a question for me of, they keep saying 30 years, so could there be a situation, do you think, where time works differently inside the park? Like, one day in the park's not equivalent to one day outside the park. I don't believe so. I mean, I, yeah, you know, I mean, it's on Mars, it might have a different revolution around the sun, <laughs> but I, I think 24 hours in the park is 24 hours on Earth, I guess. Yeah, plus part of the terms and conditions of Westworld 
visits, uh, so guests can only stay for 28 days maximum, I think, per year. But it's either per year or 28 days at a time. <laughs> yeah. That's is that on uh, HBO's website or something somewhere? Or did they say that? It's on a website, website called Discover Westworld. Yeah. Okay. It's sort of like well, that's as a, if yeah. it's a real thing and you're right, booking right. your visit. Okay. Well, why would they yeah. put a limit on it? Because isn't it profitable to just keep them there if they put money? Or is it because they run out of, they go through all the stores? Yeah, I think the loop is maybe like two weeks or a month or whatever, and then everyone goes back to their old story. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. Great. It's a uh, immersion cycle. breaking, basically. The whole th- yeah, I have an issue with that too, but I'm there's it. definitely. I mean, aside from the the thirty year uh, timeline uh, break, right? The the you know William you know, may or may not be uh, in the past. Uh, there's also just I mean a lot of like time weirdness generally in terms yeah. of when they're like pulling hosts out to have uh, philosophical chats with them. <laughs> And, uh, and other things like that. Like, I, like when, you know, in the first episode, I think Dolores goes through her loop, like, two or three times, right? So, I mean, like, is that first episode three weeks long? Is it three days long? Like, how, you know? There is a certain sort of man in the high castle ish aspect to this, isn't there? Like, I think some eagle eyed people on Reddit have said that there'll be conversations between Dolores and Bernard that I assumed were just the same conversation where, Actually, they're different conversations, but some item of his clothing, or, you know, that we, the, yeah. the, the timelines in this are much trickier than we currently think. I agree. I think yeah. they're playing all kinds of tricks with our perception of the timeline. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, I think that there's no question that the timelines are weird. I, you know, I think you can make an argument that, you know, you don't think William is, uh, 30 years ago. Like, that's fine, but I don't think, I don't think that there's any realistic way to say that you think that, uh, everything is happening in the order in which it happens on screen. Yeah, oh, no, definitely point. not. I'm just not totally sold on uh, specifically them yeah, being yeah, the yeah. same. You right. know, like it yeah. could be Arnold. It could be. There's literally a million things that could be going on. But I think it's uh, duh, obviously you can't say that the timelines are happening either because both we've seen both Nate and Mr. Abernathy and Dolores all have like weird flashbacks. Yeah. You know, of different things. So. Well, Hannah was talking about Game of Thrones and sort of the parallels with this show, how it's like following the same formula as a big budget drama with like a lot of characters and it's like a 10, ten episode season. And um, I heard that there's going to be like a big, um, like big dramatic change to the, the story on episode 9. And, like, some people have actually talked about it could be the death of William as as a theory. Why episode 9? Just because Game of Thrones always has a big episode 9? Yeah. I suppose that would make sense if you think that we get the resolution of William's story of how the park went bad in the original timeline. That kind of makes sense. Then you just set up a season 2 and episode 10 kind of thing. Yeah, I guess I don't think William's going to die, but that's just my own theory, but... Yeah, but look what happened to Ned. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Jimmy Simpson or whatever is not. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if we get the the event that happened 30 years ago that was the disaster at the park in episode 9. Oh, and what does everyone think about... Um, so they talk about the big disaster that happened 30 years ago, and some people believe that um, like the park was facing financial ruin because of that, like investors... Like dropping out, and it was actually the man in black that saved the park. I buy that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think if if Logan, if he, if William is the executive vice president, and Logan is above him, and something were to happen to Logan in the park, that uh, William might be in a position to mm-hmm. take control. Of that court. I mean, especially I mean, if they are if they are both working for Delos, and yeah. Delos is already interested in uh, acquiring some sort of an interest in the park. Um, then, then yeah, I, I think that that's perfectly plausible. We would explain the rivalry between the man in black and Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think Anthony Hopkins uh, is a huge fan. Is a huge fan yeah. of man in black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Otto doesn't seem to be able to do anything about it, despite being in his own world. Like, yeah. Much. Yeah. 
maybe you could have had Teddy stab him to death. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the rivalry is for control of the park between Anthony Hopkins and Delos, and that that William is probably if he is the man in black, he is Delos of the future. Yeah. No disagreements for me. Any other characters or theories we want to? Well, we didn't get into the. It looks like um, Bina has a lot of theories about Arnold <laughs> right. here. So um, if, they're not if, theories; they're questions. Questions. And in the words of Gandalf, questions that need answers. I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> you guys have a theory. Um, I just have questions. And it about like I've seen theories on Reddit that Arnold is like an avatar. Or that he expect a Ford, which I don't really get. Um, I, I mean, the obvious one is that they were just both creators and one beat out the other one. But is there something specific about Dolores? Was Dolores Arnold's daughter who then died or was dying, and that's why Arnold went down the path of creating organic people to replace? And then I don't know that. You know, there's all sorts of theories out there, and there also like there are theories that Ben. Is a version of Arnold's as well, created by Ford to keep him around. But I don't really believe. But anyway, over to you guys. Like the little kid. Yeah, in the same sort of vein. Yeah, I think Bernard is going to end up being somebody, whether it's like Maeve's husband or someone that we'll see as a host or something. But I think it's interesting that 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 uh, Ford asks Bernard, were, "Were you here at the beginning?" I can't quite remember. And then we see later that that Ford has pretty much a perfect memory for everything that's happened. That, that there's no way he doesn't know whether Bernard was there at the beginning or not. So I think yeah, that's just Ford messing with Bernard. Right? Yeah. Did he say at the beginning? Yeah, he's... I he, can't remember that line. I think line. it was like in the first... I thought he said, were you here then? Oh, But man, I don't remember, that. was then the beginning? I, I think they were referencing the 30 years ago. At the point. Okay, I thought, I, and again, I, I don't remember, so yeah, I've, I've only seen I may be totally wrong. I thought they were, ref I, my recollection of that line was that they were just referencing something like the switch from mechanical to organic or something like that. Maybe you're and right. Thinking, and then, but I, I, I could definitely be wrong. I, I don't remember, really. Um, but yeah, certainly when that line happened, it struck me as like, as something where it was like, do you not, like he's been here for 10 years, like yeah. you don't how long he's been? Like, I don't know. But as far as, like, Arnold and Dolores being his daughter, I don't... What evidence of that is there? Is there... I mean, we've... Well, everything we know about Arnold is that he just wanted to create for creation's sake. I don't I don't think we need, like, a dead child plot twist to make him... I mean, I think that's there because uh, Anthony Hopkins mentioned that his personal life was marred by tragedy. Oh, okay, yeah. And he threw everything into the park because of a personal tragedy. So I think that's where the uh, Arnold had a dead kid thing comes from. Fair enough. Yeah, so everything into the park in the generic sense and then specifically into Dolores. On the grounds that why did Arnold choose to specifically infuse, or did he choose to specifically give certain dolls the ability to become conscious? You know, and then therefore Dolores must be special in some way other than just being hot. I don't know, it seems like for every um, host that is um, sentient and, you know, conscious, actually it's the man, the man in black that has something to do with that. Uh, so you have anything to do with Maeve? I don't think he has anything. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, Maeve has that vision of vision being, like, her houses, uh, people break into her house and the last thing she sees uh. is the, the man in black. But I mean, if he's been there for thirty years, I would I would imagine I'd imagine he's he's tor tortured and murdered everyone. That yeah. <laughs> what about the milk guy that was killing everyone? Is he because he? They said afterward that he only killed people that or killed hosts that had killed him in the past. I don't know that that. Uh, yeah. That's fully conscious, but I don't know that we know that the man in black had anything to do with him. But he could have. I just don't. I'm not recalling that he did. Well, he's one of the. I think he's one of the. Um, one of the crew that takes you up to Dolores' farm, right? Okay, is he? Yeah. Uh, I th I think so. No, that, that, sure. that makes sense. Those guys all kind of look the same. To yeah, me. I, it's the white guys all look alike to me. So. <laughs> Hosts all look the same. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that he's one of the. He's one of the Dolores farm crew. Uh, uh, that would make sense. 
but I, but I mean, again, like I, I think that I think it would be strange. Honestly, I think it would be strange if you could draw a line from any host, or if you couldn't draw a line from any host to the Man in Black. If the guy's like, if he's done everything, like done every storyline. I mean, like he should have interacted more or less with everyone. We do one. see that he goes to Lawrence's village, and he's never been there before. That's, that's fair. You're right. That's true. So, so he, he can't have. He can't have. Yeah. Uh, it's unlikely that he's actually interacted with everyone and everything. Fair enough. But still, I mean, I think that I think it's it's not sub- if you with any specific yeah. any host you care to name, like there's no reason to think he would wouldn't have interacted with them. But yeah. And the woman at the lake. Yeah. Hey, yeah, he, but he must he have. Exactly. That was a weird. Maybe the tattoo was new, but that was also confusing to yeah. me. He was like, "Where have they been keeping you?" But he, like, he had all seen her uh, shoot up the town a couple of weeks ago. There's also like a weirdness if um, uh, now I can't remember what's the name of the the crazy cannibal cult soldier Wyatt. Wyatt. Um, it's also there's a sort of a weirdness, right? Like somehow Wyatt has become the you know the next step on uh, the Men in Black's uh, quest for the maze. But Wyatt's a new has been like recently introduced, right? Like, was there another path to the maze previously, or uh, I'm a little confused about that. Yeah, the, I mean, there must there must have been, or this is an obstacle to the path put in his way by Ford. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that might be a better way to think about it. Okay, I hadn't thought about it that way. That could be. Well, maybe Wyatt's only new to like some people, but he was a storyline that they had that was around when the critical failure happened. Did she have the tat- the snake tattoo in episode one? I don't recall. I certainly didn't notice it in episode one. Um, that's probably something I should have gone back to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now that I think about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Or did he just write that into the code after the fact? And that's, yeah. Yeah, that could have that could be. I love this question that Dina uh, proposes as part of the um, so the document, um, and it's something that I discussed in the previous podcast too. It's just, w- would you go to Westworld? So uh, Ryan and I said yes. So <laughs> on to you, Hannah. What, what do you think? Oh yeah, if I had the money. That's a big thing. So like, it <laughs> does presuppose, yeah. I'd go anywhere if I had the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'd oh, be in I Boston don't. right now if I had the damn money. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I'm really bummed out about that. But I find the whole concept of Boston me having only two people who live in Boston in it quite surreal, I have to say. <laughs> it's the only moot that I've been to where that is the case. Um, but God bless you all. Um <laughs> I would go to Westworld well, purely because I love history, so I, I don't even feel that I would need to sort of play out any of the storylines. I would just wander about it like a museum, just looking at the beautiful costumes and, you know, taking a drink in the bar, but I don't think I'd need to play in it, so to say. But maybe that's flattering my own human nature. I think it would be, I would be the same way, but if the stories were, like, historical, then I would definitely be on them. Like, if they had, like, real-life Davy Crockett or something, that would be so cool. I guess I would not go to Westworld, but not for any, like, moral reasons. I just, uh, I'm a person that plays, like, single-player role-playing games, but has no interest in playing (laughs) massively multiplayer role-playing games, just because I don't want to interact with real people. I mean, I don't think most of the guests uh, do a lot of interacting with other guests, right? Yeah, but... maybe. Maybe with the party you come in with, but that's all. You're like, you're sitting in the bar and that there's this like drunk idiot who just wants to shoot everyone in the face. It's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I'm saying it can happen. I mean, like you're maybe you might, you may or may not run into griefers, but I think like once you get onto a quest or whatever, uh, you tend not to run into, I mean, at least for what we've seen so far. Yeah. I mean, sorry, I'm not, I'm not, you know, trying to sell you on, on going <laughs> after all, Thomas. Uh, but, but I don't think it would be that bad. I also don't, I don't like him most either, but. Um, but I feel like you could go and have a, a satisfactory uh, single player experience. Yeah, if I could go by myself, I would definitely go. But I just don't. I would rather stay home than be with real people. 
that are... I would go, but maybe not with the four-week option, maybe like a week, <laughs> because like the, the idea of it is sort of interesting, but just, I sort of think like Logan, like what is there to actually do? I think it would be addictive once you were in there. I think it would be hard to, once you were into a story and, and enjoying your interaction with people and stuff, or hosts and stuff, I think it would be difficult to to leave, I imagine. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it would be uh, interesting. Chuck, I think, does that I think it could appeal be to you, Westworld? Well, porn meets the Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for a while, I'd probably be into it for the first couple of days, then get bored. It's like Custer's Revenge, if anyone's played that on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bina, what were you saying? I just actually think I probably would should not go to Westworld because I think it'd be quite addictive. So what would uh, I put in there also? What worlds would people be more interested uh, in visiting? Like for me, like a Victorian England, which I guess this is the same time period, but that would be something I would definitely be interested in also, which would also be kind of horrible <laughs> poverty and stuff. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what other worlds like Roman world or... or what other worlds would interest you guys? All of the above. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I've, <laughs> anything, anything you care to name, probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. That would I, be think good I, I think for choice. me, Dickensian Victorian world would be top, and then like Napoleonic Waterloo world would be second, <laughs> and then probably Roman worlds, like a bit at the time of Caesar, would be third. Um, and then I'd, I'd be an equal opportunities person visiting anything else. Oh, actually, maybe like Marie Antoinette Versailles. That'd be quite interesting. And then, yeah, like St. Petersburg. Like, I, don't, I don't know. So as, as a woman, are these... Because obviously, historically speaking, women are not have the same opportunities as men. Would that, that discourage you? Or, or do you think it should be historically accurate like that? Or do you think it should be... Tailored. To yeah, but I'm, I'm going as a host, right? So. Oh, you're going as a host? <laughs> not as a host, as a <laughs> guest. Sorry, as a guest. Yeah. So I assume that gives me some immunity because obviously, yeah. as a, not just as a woman, but as a woman of color, yeah. I'm either just going to be a servant or a freak in all of these environments. So, you know, it's all very well saying, oh, I'd love to live in the time of Marie Antoinette's Versailles, but yeah, you'd, you'd be like stoking the coals, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. And actually, I'd want to go back to Napoleon's Waterloo as a man because I'd want to be in a cavalry charge. Like, I really, really want to be in a cavalry charge. Apparently, Robin Lane Fox, who wrote, um, he's like an ancient historian, when, is it Oliver Stone made his, his film on, um, Alexander the Great? And he gave him the rights to his books as long as he could be part of the Hollywood cavalry charge. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of shit I would do. I'd like to see Joseph II's Vienna. But was anything happening in Joseph the Second's Vienna? Because wasn't he um, really God. austere? I mean, he was the guy who ended the partying, right? Um, yeah, pretty much. But he did a lot of policy stuff. There was a lot of rebellions as well. Yeah. I think I'd probably rather be in sort of, like, early 1910s Vienna, like, you know, the Golden Age. Um, well, in fact, that's... that's Joseph the Second's Vienna had Beethoven. No, um, not Beethoven, Mozart. So you could hear but Mozart live. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Oh man, I'd go back to Woodstock. <laughs> except, except we're not the actually life. time traveling, right? These are just robots who were <laughs> pretending to be Mozart. <laughs> right? You didn't, you didn't get, you don't get to hear Mozart live. It's just a robot. So what you're saying is just get the Blue Raider. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think get yeah, a Tardis. So I think the advantage, like the true advantage of going back in this way, where it is robots and you're totally safe, is you'd go to the places yeah. that were really dangerous. So yeah, to, for me to be in the midst of the Battle of Waterloo, but knowing I couldn't get killed, that's attractive. There's no real point to me going back to sort of Dickensian England in a way, because, you know. I think um, they're, I think they're going to get charged more than 40 grand a day if they have to field a... Uh... <laughs> Four but, or five armies or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but... When, I would pay a lot. Like, I would pay... Yeah. I, I would literally downsize my house to go back to Waterloo. <laughs> I, I think really that would, would. R ruin the romance of it for you, though, don't you think? To see, like, bodies being torn by grape shot or something, don't... I, I, feel I, don't, like... I don't think I have a romantic view Okay, of fair enough. But I, I take your point. I mean, I don't want to do a soccer cast on myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that was rude for you. 
It wasn't ruined. It just, it just, it was in a perfect place in my imagination. That's all. <laughs> um, anything else? Any other characters? Someone like looked up the names of some sidekicks, which I thought was really hilarious. Felix and Sylvester. Oh, I just, I like those guys a lot. I know. Who are they? I they're didn't the, know who you're talking about. They're the two techs. The Felix is no, the guy, guy with the one bird. Speed. Oh, they were funny in like this last episode that yeah. was on last night. That they were quite funny. And they reminded me of the funny. two guys from uh, Prometheus, just who kind of I thought stole kind of Prometheus for me. The kind of funny uh, geologist and biologist guy. That's who they remind me of. And it seems like they're actually with Maeve who is, I guess, one of my favorite characters, that, that they're going to have like an, an actual larger role in the story going forward, which I think should be a lot of fun. Prometheus had the worst scientist ever. Yeah, that's why they were fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so my view on the pariah orgy scene is that I found it, I don't normally mind gratuitous sex on screen, but I did find it a bit pointless. And like you can demonstrate that this world is, this part of the world is really beyond, and it also felt, from a design point of view, jarring because we're in this Western world, and then you get this very highly kind of alien stylized sex scene that felt more like Stanley Kubrick's eyes white shut. So I just didn't think it worked. But I'd be interested to know what you all think of it. I was going to say, um, I, I I wonder how many guests were there. Um, like as if if they put the whole thing on like more or less just for Logan, then I think it's pretty weird. Um, but if there, I mean, it seemed like there were, I don't know, it seemed like there could have been uh, several guests there. Um, and in that case, like, I could see it being sort of like a, it's like a, I mean, Pariah is like, this is supposed to be this, um, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah kind of place, right? Like, and so I could see that, like, it's like a pilgrimage for the, uh, the people who are more interested in, in sex or in orgies or whatever, right? Um, so like I, and then also from a meta point of view, I mean, it's HBO and they've got to get their, uh, quantity of, of sex and tits for the, you know, whatever, for that audience. Yeah. I, they've got to get the yayas out. Yeah. This is a question that just struck me. You know how, like, Westworld is a world where we're beyond law, so anything is permitted, especially sexual violence against women. Um, is there anywhere in the documentation? I mean, they're not going to show on screen, but is pedophilia allowed? I mean, would you not just attract all the, the really scummy pedos of the world to go there and start abusing kids? Yeah, I had yeah. thought about that too. Yeah, I. You would have to imagine that it takes place, just like there's sex tourism on current day Earth. I, I would have to imagine that that takes yeah, place. Yeah, I thought that's why Ford's warned the boy from coming there again. That's why I, why I thought he did that. Yeah, but Ford's very much in the camp of their robots, right? So, I mean, I you know, I don't think Ford has a... I don't think Ford's worried about about that boy being assaulted. Or I mean, like, he wouldn't care, right? I mean... I guess it's an open question. I mean, that, that's my point. There's a hypocrisy, isn't there? Like, if, if it's okay to have sexual violence against women because they're not really women... Why wouldn't yeah. it be okay to have sexual violence against kids? Absolutely, I, mean, are, I, I think. Are you being over nice at that point? You know, yeah, if they're just I've, dolls, they're just dolls. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. With, I, I think so. I don't. Yeah, I, 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 so I mean, I, I sorry. If, if to the extent that, uh, well, obviously we don't know. Well, so there's two things, right? Like, one is HBO wouldn't show it exactly, because yeah. it would upset people. Um, but then, then the, the second thing is that it's possible that Delos bans it for exactly the same reason that HBO wouldn't show it, right? Because it would upset people. Um, yeah. And, I mean, you can certainly make a... <laughs> you can certainly make a, a perfectly good point that it's it's crazy that it would upset people, you know, abusing children, but it doesn't upset people to, you know, rape and torture women. Um, sure, uh, that's, that's a fair point to make. Um, but, nonetheless, I think, you know, in our media, that, that is the case. You know, you can rape a woman and people don't get so upset that you can't uh, rape a child. People... Yeah, I, I, same I, thing about gay guests. Well, we've seen Logan be bisexual, right? Yeah. I assume pedophilia happens, it's just not going to be shown to us. That's that's my assumption that it would happen. And I'll, I'll call it pedophilia, but it's, it's a robot, so I don't know if that's an accurate term, but the child hosts, there's sex with child hosts. 
I would. It, it I would, does say something really interesting about our society, though, doesn't it? That we can watch women being. I'm, I'm, of course, I'm not saying that there's an equivalence here between child abuse and abusing women, but I think it is interesting to explore the fact that you can have, you know, massive and multiple occasions of women being abused, and that's deemed okay for HBO, but. It's just interesting where society chooses to draw the lines, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, for sure. Yeah, I don't even really want to go into it too much, but um, I, I, I suppose that it exists in this park, but it's uh, not going to be shown to us. Well, my thing with it is like, are there kids in the park that are hosts other than that one we saw? We've seen a. It's hard. I mean, we don't know, but there are kids running around the streets of Street Water, Sweetwater. There was rather. the the young girl that talked to Dolores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lawrence's so, daughter. Yeah, we know that. But they're is not... she really there, or is she just something that Dolores saw? Because wouldn't it be very easy for she corporates to, to get out of this by she just talked getting... to them. Sorry. No, I mean, I'm just thinking like an easy cop out for a corporate would be just not to have anyone at the age of 15 or something in the world, but. She talked to the man in black, though, so we know she's there. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. I, I was just going to say, until uh, so, whoever just mentioned her, uh, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing, Bina, which is that it would be an easy way to to avoid that problem, is just not have anyone uh, who was a child. You, but, I mean, people, for whatever reason, people bring their own kids here, which makes no sense to me, and I would assume they would want... To have children for them to interact with and play with of their own age. Why does it make no sense to you? Like, why, why would you we? bring a child to this place, which is <laughs> built on sex and violence? I mean, it's just that's how I feel about people taking their kids to Vegas. Yeah, I, I am not going to tell people how to be parents, but uh, it doesn't make sense to me either. I, yeah, I mean, especially I guess I may, I may have made this point in the thread. Also, um, but especially at the forty thousand dollar a day price tag, like I don't understand why. Yeah, I, like the kinds of things you could do with a kid in Westworld, I don't understand why you would pay forty thousand. Yeah, unless unless as Hannah said earlier, maybe it is a, just a post-apocalyptic world, and this is this is the only place to experience anything resembling. Well, we do have. We do have some, uh, just, there was, it was only one line, uh, but from the last episode, when, uh, let me look at wh what you said their names were. Sylvester and Felix. Oh, Felix, yeah. Um, uh, they're named after cats for some it. reason. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, had that line about, uh, having a, a redhead in the simulator or something. Yeah. So it sounds like they do have, uh, simulators, uh, although exactly how good they are. I guess we're not sure, since at least one of the other texts uh, felt like he would have a better time uh, <laughs> having sex with, uh, with an unconscious host, so maybe the simulators aren't that great. I guess one thing I did want to talk about, I don't know if we're done with that part or not, but I, I wanted to talk about the photograph from the first episode, and what, if mm -hmm. anything, we can kind of glean from its existence and its appearance as to time and place. With Mr. Abernathy? Oh. Yeah, so they, they find that picture, which appears to me anyway to be 21st century America. I don't know if that's reading too much into it. but uh, Yeah, you know, I, I didn't look at it that closely, but you're you're right. It, I mean, I, when I, that photograph looks very like our current day, uh, yeah. sort of modern. Or within reasonable. Yeah, within a reasonable. And what it's, ex I mean... You know, how did it get there? How long has it been there? If it's on Mars, why would it be there? And and I mean, to me, that's the biggest evidence that this is on Earth somewhere. Yeah. The question is, is this meant to be much closer to our contemporary time than we think? I don't know. Yeah, I think the 30 years ago or 35 years ago or whatever is closer to our contemporary time. Than, than we might otherwise think. That's that's my own supposition, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we're too far future. Um, I mean, just in terms of, and I mean, I know that to some extent it's the kind of thing where they, you know, maybe they would hand wave it just to avoid having to make everyone look weird or whatever, but 
like fashion wise and a lot of other things, you know, it's, it's not, it does not seem strange, uh, which would make me think it's not, you know, super far future, certainly. Yeah, I just, I forgot to put that in notes and I wanted to talk about it, so I'm sorry if I threw the. No, no, that's fine. Um, no, but it's a great point. So, uh, I guess they, they take pretty good care these days to make sure people aren't bringing artifacts, modern artifacts into the park. But it could be the kind of thing where, um, you know, at various earlier yeah. points, the, uh, the. Just in construction even or something. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that, yeah, that's a good point. That or just, um, you know, like maybe they weren't great at, at earlier points in terms of like searching people or whatever, uh, for, for personal effects. Um, so, I mean, I think that it's, uh, I don't think it's necessarily like a, oh, definitely on Earth kind of a thing. I mean, even if it is Mars. Um, I think is there a gravity problem on Mars? Now that I think about it, uh, in terms of well, I, it take place there? I mean, if you're, in, I, I think it's uh something you could work around if you're going to have an atmosphere. I think you could okay. simulate a close to Earth gravity. I see. Just in terms of technological, you think you could manage? Yeah, yeah if it's, uh, I think if it's in a closed facility, I think you could. I don't know. I. I uh, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't think much. that, uh, I don't think that it being, uh, that I think that if, if we assume that it got there, you know, either from a, a, a worker or a guest at some point when the, you know, uh, security was not, not so tight, um, I don't think that it's hard to imagine how it would have gotten there. I'm just saying if it's Mars, I feel like then it shouldn't be a picture that looks like it's from today. That, that yeah, I agree. By colonizing Terra- Mars, we have to be maybe 50 or 100 mm. years into the future I see what to get to yeah. that point. Or an apocalyptic event that kind of wipes out photos and stuff. Um, or, who put, who put I mean, Hans sorry. And what the show wrong? Can, sorry, I interrupted, so finish. Like, uh, I was just going to say, just to, to continue the photograph talk, um, if we, I mean, it could also, you know, whatever, be a really old photograph. Um, so I, I heard somebody saying recently, um, they were talking about, uh, like the, the modern music on the, on the piano. I thought of that too. Right. And they were saying, somebody was saying, if that music is actually being played, that would be immersion breaking for people there, unless the music is so old that, uh, people don't really associate, like, you know, the way, like, as things get older, we stop sort of being able to associate them with their correct timeline or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so somebody was saying that maybe the music is so old that people, <laughs> that people don't really distinguish between it and the old West anymore. Um, so I don't, I don't think I believe that. I think the music is really just there for us, the TV show audience, and maybe it's playing in the real world and maybe it's not really. It doesn't really matter, but. But if so, I think that's a weakness. I don't, I just think it's too clever, like too clever, clever, winking at the audience and it breaks my immersion. So I was wondering if it's kind of 30 years ago from, like, say, 30 years ago was our time. So Radiohead's like 40 years ago in their yeah. world, I get. Mm-hmm. Then maybe it's there, like, the spinning top in Inception. Like, it's there as just a little false note to remind the guests that this isn't real, lest they get too sucked into it. Hmm. Um, yeah. Just because it's written by Nolan. So Because I was thinking it, it just seems like a false step. Like, it's such a... It's kind of cool to hear Radiohead on the scene. I love it. It just feels like a cheap, kind of easy thrill. Like, why would people creating this reality, this immersive world for us, do that unless it has a sort of a psychological trigger that they want to be there for for the guests? Yeah, but I don't think the park is designed to be historical historically accurate. I think it's supposed to be a fantasy world to begin with. I don't think like like if an Asian guest wants to go to Westworld, they have any interest in being you know, having racial epithets hurled at them by hosts, if that would be historically accurate, you know what I'm saying? I think they want to create a fantasy world that is what we would want the Wild West to be, or our romantic vision of the Wild West. They don't actually want to create a specific time and place perfectly accurately. Yeah, I mean, I get that, but I just don't see what having Radiohead on the piano kind of gives you. I mean, you can create the fantasy romantic image of the Wild West, which doesn't include that. It just yeah. it just seems random, basically. But 
don't get me wrong. I mean, I love it, and you can go to YouTube and find whole Radiohead pianola playlists. But um. yeah, but I, I think I mean, there's been enough player piano kind of in the show already that that I think we should be thinking that there's something there. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I, I don't think it's there's too much piano stuff in in this show already to for it all to just be. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm thinking way too much, but it, it, for it just to be thrown in there, I don't think. No, I agree. I don't know. I was going to ask what everyone thought about the piano. I don't know. I guess I guess I don't agree. I think that it's just something that they thought would be cool for the TV show, and they're and I don't I don't think it's super immersion breaking. Uh, you know, for fantasy Wild West world to have like a uh, you know piano version of Black Hole Sun or whatever. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal. I think that it's... I don't think it would bother me in in world. And I think mostly they just thought it would be cool for the TV show. But I could be wrong. I mean, maybe there's a, a deeper meaning. Or what. Did we talk about um, things that were... Well, what Westworld reminds you of? So other shows or movies? We did not. I'm trying to think what... That would be a fun discussion. <laughs> I mean, I just think all the obvious ones for me are Battlestar Galactica because that was about, it wasn't a fantasy world, but it was integrating Cylons. And then similarly, Humans, which maybe we don't talk about because I think it's just basically a UK TV show, but that has Cylons being used as domestic help. And it does, you know, it does discuss the blurring of morality where, you know, you're not meant to rape them, but sort of people do, people have affairs with them. And then some of them, have consciousness because their creator wanted to give certain ones of them consciousness because he had a tragedy with a child who died. So it, it seems like Humans is very much the kind of the low budget UK TV version of this that predated it by a season. And I think it's very good quality. So if anyone's listening and hasn't found Humans, it's really worth checking out. I think it's a really good show. It's just come back for a second season. Well, Glenn, you mentioned, I think, a Blade Runner in the thread, and I can definitely see that. And then I'm very old, so I, re- I remember Fantasy Island, I guess, which is uh, kind of like a PG or a G-rated uh, Westworld. I guess for me, I could see a little Firefly in it, just the Wild West meets future themes. The show immediately at the went into my mind, especially with the, the premiere episode, was the Truman Show. Yeah, there's that kind of control room kind of backstory to it. Hmm. Yeah. And Ed Harris is in that too, isn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. was just today. Dina's whole idea about this being a dystopian world where, like, um, people have never experienced, like, a world like Westworld or like all the scenery that's in Westworld, it reminded me of the Maze Runner. Oh, the Maze Runner is about a group of boys that are selected and they go into this artificial world, and you know they have to do all these trials and tests. But once they get out of that, it's actually a nightmare that they're going to because it's actually this dystopian world where, um, you know, there's people are like killer zombies. <laughs> It's basically like a mashup of like Ender's Game and The Hunger Games. Do we all think then we're going to see the outside world? I guess we're or we're we're, do we? Think? I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually I hope I hope we don't. I think probably we will, but I I don't know. I I have a hard time imagining an outside world that adds to the experience for me. I think that. Most of the, the outside world stuff I can imagine would detract. So I'm not looking forward to it, but uh, but I think that we probably will. Yeah, I just don't see how five seasons or whatever could. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, yeah, I think it would. Yeah, be that's kind of my point. Yeah, I, I think it's something they would hold off. Like it would be a big reveal, a big season ending moment. Maybe not this one, but maybe yeah. another. Another season. Um, I assume that, that no one has figured out how the guns work and wanted to tell me about that. 
As if someone did figure it out, I would really like to know. Seems like they're... Good. Why, why, do you, why don't you spell out your question sure. so that if someone's listening to the podcast... Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm yes. to figure it out. Well, that's, that's a fair point, I suppose, Vina. <laughs> um, I, I am... <laughs> Uh, I'm personally fascinated with uh, the way that the the firearms work or don't work in Westworld. Um, I don't, to me, I don't really understand. Uh, I don't understand what could possibly be happening. Um, I haven't seen the movie. My understanding from the movie is that, uh, from somebody telling me about the movie, is that the guns have some sort of a sensor, so they can tell when they're pointed at a guest versus a host. Correct. And they, they don't fire. They're pointed at a at a guest. Is that right? I believe they're not allowed to fire it. Yeah, I don't really remember if. I mean, there can always be ricochets and stuff, but I don't remember. I there. I feel like there's like a heat sensor where they're not allowed to fire at living things, but I yeah, could be misremembering. This is really yeah. Um, but my my thing is just that the. The guns clearly seem to be firing metal and firing it at a uh, significant velocity, right? Like, we we certainly... It appears that guns will fire through things like wooden doors. Uh, there's the the Maeve and... Uh, I can never remember his name. Hector? What's his name? Hector, I think. Hector. Yeah, it's Hector. Thank you. Uh, there's the Maeve and Hector scene uh, at the end of episode four... Yeah. Uh, where the sheriff is and his uh, posse or whatever are firing through the door, and, and the door seems to be splintering and coming apart under the the barrage of bullets. But there's obviously that same scene. Uh, Maeve has a uh, a bullet fragment in her abdomen that they didn't remove. So obviously the guns are firing metal um, or into uh, into the hosts. Uh, and they seem to be firing something at guests, right? Like, we have the man in black is getting peppered with, with shots in the first episode. William gets shot in the shoulder um, in episode whatever it is, three or four. Um, and it gets knocked down, um, probably just because he wasn't expecting to be hit. Um, so they're, they're clearly firing something. But generally speaking, I mean, there's not there's not a safe speed to fire a piece of metal at a, at a person. Uh <laughs> From my my understanding, like if if it if it if it is fast enough that it will hit you, that it might make you fall down. That's not cool. a safe speed for metal. He might have fallen down because he got hit. He was with, surprised. Yeah. certainly. I mean, I, I'm not saying that he's that that the force alone yeah. knocked him down, but I'm saying like if it, I mean like if I just walked up to somebody and punched him in the shoulder, like they probably aren't going to fall down, even if it is surprising, right? Um, yeah. I, I guess I assume it's something like a pellet gun, but that it the pellets interact differently with the materials in the park than we would expect them to interact with the materials in the park, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, that was the thought that I had. So you think that maybe just the flesh of uh, yeah, it's guests not is different than the flesh of hosts? Correct, yeah. That's, that, that's my assumption, but I... I really have no good explanation. Like, you could still get shot in the eyeball or something. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Do you think that's, like, more proof of it being, like, a VR world, though? If you wanted, if you wanted but, to argue for a VR world, I think that that would be a thing you could use to argue for it. Yeah, but why would but, they be removing well, metal? They, we yeah. see them removing metal from Maze's exactly. body. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no, there. I don't think there's any good evidence for a VR world, um, where you have text uh, removing. You know, why would? There yeah, be- exactly. Like, what's the point of all that control? Re- I mean, like, I have literally every scene where you have a robot in the back, right, yeah. uh, or a host uh, being worked on, is ridiculous in a VR world. Like, because uh, my thing too with it is, remember when they're trying to bust out of prison and they're like, we have a request for a pyrotechnic event. Mm-hmm. When it just happens, it's like... Again, I think... I don't know. I think if it is like a dystopian future, maybe the whole thing is VR and even like the quote-unquote employees don't realize it. Like a Matrix-style thing, like Bina was saying. Again, I took that as like they can control how the materials interact with each other. So, like, Hunger Games. So, because it's like they order it and drop it in. 
there, I don't see anyone like behind the scenes, a park employee, like. I mean, if it's if it's sufficiently high tech, right? I mean, like it could be a thing, like just as an example, right? Like, um, like plastic explosive, um, it like you can't you can't set off plastic explosive with a flame. You have to set it off with an electrical charge. I think I don't really know that much, but movies seem to have indicated <laughs> that to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, so if, it, if it's something like that, right? Like if there's say just as an example, a tiny, tiny, thin layer of some sort of explosive that can't be detonated by fire and has to be detonated by an electrical charge and the electrical and there's some sort of like a little um, uh, little sensor in the in the explosive and if you send a radio signal to the explosive then it will detonate right then that could be that would be an explanation for that scene right like he has the explosive in the cigars but he has to but he has to ask for the part to detonate it yeah like, it, like he put quote unquote black powder, gunpowder in the cigar, but what he actually put in the, the cigar is something that is not an active thing. It's something that they have control of, the third party. That's how I took it. Yeah. It's not really an explosive. It's just in, in the world it appears to be an explosive, but they can control whether it is or is not. <laughs> The thing with it, like, say if it, the guns had any sort of projectile, <coughs> that seems like a really high risk situation. I mean, a BB can yeah. hurt you really badly. Yeah, I think we all agree. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the, there's there's something. Yeah, so there's something I don't understand about the gun situation. Do you think that like the hosts all have like squibs in them then that are? Like, I mean, I don't know. They would have to have them over, like, their entire body, and then, like I was saying before, with the scenery destruction, like, there would have to be tons of squibs, like, in all the doors and stuff like that, so I don't think squibs is a... Squibs doesn't seem like a realistic possibility to me. I think if they have... And then also, there's the, the bullet fragment in Maeve really yeah. disproves that also. Yeah. I mean, that can't be... Like, there's no reason for that to be there except for the fact that the guns fire bullets. Do you think it could be a case where, not a virtual reality, but, like, all of the hosts are 3D printed and we've seen that. Like, all of the diagnostic scenes each saying Thomas are proof against a VR world. But what if, like, all of the guests are there, like, they've been somehow downloaded into a, a host thing so they can feel everything, but then there's no risk of them getting Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I've heard somebody else say that as well. Sorry. Um, in I've that case, though... <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I've been in and out because I'm at work, so I'm What's sorry. No, 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 no I, didn't, I didn't mean somebody else in the podcast. I meant uh, somebody else on the internet or something. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what's been said. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Um, so my the problem I have with that is it means uh, there's no reason why the hosts or why the guests uh, shouldn't be able to be shot if they're just downloaded into uh, uh, robot bodies. Then they shouldn't have like the immunity from from damage that the that they currently enjoy. Unless maybe they did that to start off with and it became too traumatic for period people to have that experience of being shot and then sort of regened back into their body, so to say. Yeah. We also see... But uh, I, I admit that's weak. We yeah, see that's... park workers physically in the park, right? We see uh, Ashley and Lo Lois, Louis, what is her name? We see them with the woodcutter where they're in physical... Elsie. Elsie, yep. And they're in physical danger. And we also see, like, techs come in and physically move. I, I guess that wouldn't, but uh, I feel like uh, Ashley and Elsie are in, are in physical danger. Yeah, I, I think that that's true. Which I, I don't even know why they have to physically go in and do that, why they can't just remotely shut the guy off or something, but... Uh, yeah, I don't understand. I mean, like, obviously there are some problems with uh, sleep mode currently, but uh, but yeah, assuming that there are not problems with sleep mode, 
I don't understand why you need to have the tablet five feet away from the guy, why you can't just do it remotely, but, eh, you know, whatever. Yeah, I don't understand why you have to saw his head off to get his yeah, data um, out either. You that can't also just seems to upload yeah. it or something. Check him for rabies. <laughs> uh, but also, I mean, and this kind of ties back into uh, William is the Man in Black stuff. Um, but just generally, there seems to be some discrepancies, I think, with um, how closely both guests and hosts are tracked in the park. Um, because, so we have, uh, as an example, right, obviously the, the people whose names Thomas has said a second ago that I don't recall, um, <laughs> the QA person and the, <laughs> and the, and the other person, uh, track the, the woodcutter. So obviously they can track, uh, hosts. And then we have things like, um, Ford when he's at dinner with the Prime Minister of Norway, who's the head of QA, <laughs> the director of QA. Um, when he's at lunch with her, he knows where she was sitting as a child, uh, you know, 30 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever. Um, so they seem to be able to track guests as well as hosts, um, through the park. But then there's that odd scene when, uh, when Dolores is off her track in episode four. Um, there's that control room scene where they're like, oh, Dolores is off her track. Uh, should we send someone to get her? And they're like, I don't know. Is she with a uh, with a guest? And they're like, uh, we can't tell. And it's like, what are you talking? Like, oh. what do you? What in the world could you possibly mean? You can't tell. Like, I have no idea what that could. Yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> and so, unless you wanted, uh, <laughs> the only reason for them to say you can't tell is if you want to keep the audience in suspense about whether current day Dolores is actually with William or not. Yeah, it's it's unclear whether those inconsistencies are are plot holes or they're part of the plot, I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah, you had a um, I think this is you, Thomas, writing in green uh, yeah. uh, next to the question of do Logan's family sit on the board? Oh, yeah. you put yes, but then you had an asterisk next to the yes. Well, I think in current day they sit on the board, but in Logan's time they are not yet. Yeah, they probably they sit on the board of Delos, but Delos does not own Westworld. That is my career. Yeah. Okay. That's my yeah. Okay. Yep. I would tend to agree with that. So then, who is who is the Delos person in the park, and who from the park is sending information to Delos? Uh, the, well, the person in the park now is probably the Man in Black from Delos. The Man in Black is definitely the easy answer to that yeah. question. If it's someone else, then I don't think we have any idea. Okay. So I have just one last thing. There's a, there's a quote from Jonathan Nolan, uh, and he's talking about the actual Westworld, not just the show, but what the arc is. And he says, Westworld is the next chapter of the human story in which we stop being the protagonists. I, for one, welcome our new robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, maybe it's like uh, we're... We're God, and it's the it's the host's story now. It's like we're the it's their story, I guess, for them to make for themselves. I don't know how. Else. I mean, I, I I don't welcome it. I mean, I'm a firm believer that humanity dies probably the start of my lifetime in a silent apocalypse. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I can't even believe this. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind. I think we'll. I think we'll make the transhuman jump, and uh, we'll all be. We'll all be partly artificial, and we'll all be very happy that way. Okay. I In guess the I... words of Patrick the Tomal, I don't care. It doesn't affect my daily life. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, I, know, I know we want to wrap it up. But do we believe then that the hosts, once they have their own conscious, are they? They're just people, right? They're no longer machines. Is everyone? How does people feel about that? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the host. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm really curious as to what's up with Maeve because it seems like she had a family and lived somewhere. I guess uh, near Ghost Nation Braves hang out. 
I mean, it's one of those things, right? Like, she didn't really have a family, right? She had a loop in which she had a daughter and a small cabin, right? And was, in, no doubt, on a on a daily or, or weekly or however often loops repeat, right? Savaged by Indians or saved by um, by cowboys from the same Indians or whatever, right? Like Maybe the Indians saved her from the cowboys. Yes, once. exactly. Sorry, that was very racist. <laughs> Um, so Texas. Either, <laughs> this was either a loop where she had a kid, which we haven't seen any evidence of kid hosts, or that's her as a guest and she brought her kid, and something Wait, happened. I think it was like, a past host. Can't die. Maybe you can. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any reason to think that um, that any of the hosts currently. I mean, I know that it's a. It's a theory that's out there, and partly because of um, future whatever world. future world yeah. um, that that uh, people are turned into hosts. But I don't think that there's any particular evidence that that's true. Um, I think I think that that was I, I don't know I, I don't I don't have any reason to think I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying I don't have any reason to think that anything that's happened to Maeve isn't part of one of her loops as a uh, as a host. Well, previous like you... previous to this second, though, I think now she is, for all intents and purposes, a, a person now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sure how I feel about whether that's true or not. Um, I think definitely the show is saying that. I don't know whether I believe it or not. I think I'm a little a little bit on on Ford's side, and I guess the Man in Black side also. I'm not sure that I think. An entirely, const- I don't know. I mean, without or is this, like, is the point of the park some kind of thing where you know cryogenic freezing turned out to be bunk? So we'll keep your <laughs> a alive. So Walt Disney's going to be the ultimate, and we'll pay for it by turning it into a theme park. Yeah, I would love to see yeah, Walt I mean, Disney's that's... frozen head attached to a <laughs> giant robot body, killing everyone at the end. <laughs> Gatling <laughs> guns for arms, <laughs> laser eyes. Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. I didn't mean to bring up. Big. On that happy note, I'm gonna I'm gonna bug out. Well, thank you, Glenn and Vina, and everyone else. Um, okay, thank you for everyone that joins. No, I think that's about it. So, all done? great books. There's a beginning, middle, and end. So this would be middle podcasts. I'm sure we'll do a ending podcast for the season one review so hopefully everyone can join here and yeah, hopefully hope there's I a lot more wind up looking like an idiot <laughs> 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 and yeah hopefully there's a lot more to discuss then like a big reveal at the end of the season I would have to think so yeah oh well thanks everyone have a good day yeah, thank you very much uh, for, for hosting alright All right. Okay, adios bye. amigos Good day, guys. guys. It began with Westworld. Three, two, one, activate now. A futuristic playground where people could act out their fantasies with robots so sophisticated it was impossible to tell them from humans. Your move. Suddenly, the robots changed turned into the deadly servants of their creator, Simon Quaid, who took them beyond Westworld. I have an impregnable army of loyal and unquestioning troops. I've placed robots all over the world. He wants it all. He has one heck of a good chance of getting it with those robots. Delos, builders of Westworld, must stop Quaid. Assigned is security chief John Moore and special agent Pam Williams. Let's face it, John, it's your wits against Quaid's machines. All I'd like to say before you guys formally wrap up is that um, I'm happy to edit, but I won't be able to edit for about a week and a half. So if someone else wants to edit it faster because we've done episodes one through five and future revelations might make this obsolete, go ahead. But if not, given that I kind of did kick it off and say I'd edit, I feel bad like if someone else feels it much. So anyway, sort it out amongst yourselves and send me the file if you want me to do it. Okay. Bye. Okay. See ya.
I would have definitely cut this off earlier had I known I was going to end up editing. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, my wife is Nana Remoing for the weekend, so I might have a chance to get to it this weekend. So she's doing fine. Uh, Nana Remo National Novel Writing. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So. I'm not doing anything after today. I could give it a crack, but of course I do still have peep show to edit. It's 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 not that I don't have time, but I'm not gonna fucking edit anything. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Uh, you say you had a you did a peep show of you okay? Yeah, we did a while back, and I have been procrastinating on editing it. I love Mitchell and Webb. I never got into Peep Show that much, but I'd listen to that. It was out of control. <laughs> we How were much all have drunk. you edited? Um, exactly zero minutes and zero. <laughs> That's terrible, Hannah. <laughs> I know, Glenn. We talked about it. Um, <laughs> my my schedule got really jacked up from what I thought it was going to be, and then I celebrated my thirtieth birthday this weekend. So happy name day. I've person. been uh, hung over. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I've been. Kind of in person, I guess. This is my uh, first day of feeling alive again from all the festivities. <laughs> but yeah, I could give it a try if no one else wants to. It's This is a lot shorter than Peep Show was. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. And okay, well, I'll give it organized a organized, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a try this weekend, and if I can't get to it, I'll send it to you and Bina if I can. Okay. Right. Yeah, like on Peep Show, Bina was supposed to be my co-host because it was my first time hosting, and I didn't really know what I was doing. And she got totally shit faced before we even started the call. <laughs> Glenn was very professional out, like, on the one episode I tried to host. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, Glenn, I think I'll have Peep Show out. Um, when is Winds of Winter coming out? <laughs> <laughs> well, supposedly two thousand seventeen. You know, uh, during that podcast, uh, that recording, I was looking at podcast Face and Fire, and there's already a thread started for will when winds of winter be released in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, I think that's appropriate. <laughs> I think we. Well, I mean, I think officially yeah, I, I, missed the boat on two thousand. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I think well, even if there was an announcement, even if George finished today, I don't think it would get released. Yeah. Uh, in 2016. So. Yeah, so March would be the earliest, I think, at this point we could even hope for. It was March last time, right? March in 2011? I thought it was July. I feel like, is that wrong? I heard January, but that was like in 2014. So. I can't remember. Who knows? I know I was wearing shorts, but that could be really interesting. <laughs> I think it was, I want to say it was July that, that uh, Dance came out. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always July, I think. Um, so, like, all other books have been released July or August. Yeah, you're right. It was July. Oh, well. It'll happen when it happens, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much. <Yep. laughs> that is true. Or it won't. <laughs> yeah, or it will not happen when it does not Don't happen. you dare say that. We'll put your bad juju on it. <laughs> anyway, I've got to go, so. Thanks, Jock. Sorry about the okay. technical difficulty. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Good podcast. Yeah. 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 Sorry about the weather. <laughs> where, are, where are you? Can't help it. Are you, are you able to move to any point, or are you not anywhere near London? Um, nowhere near London. Where do you live? Um, exact opposite of the UK, um, Aberdeen, about oh, 40 right. miles out of it in the middle of nowhere. Oh my goodness. But presumably, yeah. like, amazingly beautiful, though. Yeah. A sort of empty beauty, <laughs> if you understand it. Does that mean you have, exactly. like, a Donald Trump golf course near where you are? <laughs> yes, that is near where I am, <laughs> Trump International. <laughs> so, are you, are you actually the person who, like, threw a cabbage at him when he came by recently? Because someone did that, uh, right? Um, no, but there's also been um, golf balls with a Nazi symbol pointed on them. And um, when his plane docked in Aberdeen Airport and our train was going by, everyone lifted the middle finger to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not very popular here. <laughs> well, you make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyway, see ya. Bye. Bye. Yeah.